You know, I think funding SETI has always been a challenge. And I think one of the reasons why, maybe the primary reason why it's been such a challenge is this so-called, this giggle factor, this, this association of, of SETI with, um, with pseudoscience, with, uh, with ufology and, you know, the paranormal and, and these sort of anecdotal reports that we see on shows on the History Channel and things. It's sort of always been a challenge in just throughout the history of the field to convince both funding agencies and our colleagues that, that what we're doing is, is valid. You know, everything that we think was necessary uh, for life to begin in our own solar system on Earth is present all over the galaxy and probably all over the universe. There's lots of organic molecules, there's lots of water, there's lots of planets. Um, so all of the things that we think are necessary are out there and, and literally every day that goes by we're, we're sort of piling on more, more evidence uh, into, that, um, into, that, into that pile. And, and I think that that is um, really making the, the question of, of extraterrestrial life and intelligent life uh, that much more prescient. I think um, people are, are considering it uh, as, a, as a real possibility, um, uh, more so than, than ever before, and that's certainly positive for, for funding. Um, but, but that being said, I think um, you know, most of the funding agencies in, in the world internationally are run by, uh, by governments, and, and governments tend to be um, fairly conservative uh, when it comes to sort of new, new ideas and sort of um, you know, the, the most cutting edge uh, science. And I, I think there is an opportunity for uh, for both individuals and and for for industry to become involved in that. Uh, we've recently um, come together with some of our colleagues, um, both here in the in the Bay Area and also internationally, to create a, a new organization with the sort of the singular goal of providing sustainable SETI funding. SETI funding has been very irregular in the last couple of decades. So. The first sort of what we call the mod first modern SETI experiment was done about 55 years ago or so. And SETI funding since that time has gone from almost nothing to nearly $10 million a year, back down to nothing again, and maybe back up to about a million dollars a year or so internationally as it is now. And, and the problem with that is, is that, of course, in the, in the good times, we can get a lot done. Uh, but in the lean times, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to conduct experiments. But, but really, the, the difficulty with that is, is it makes it very difficult to maintain what I, what I call the sort of scientific continuity of the field. Um, because at times, you know, for, for several years, funding can go down to almost zero. All of the people that are involved in SETI have to find other things to do. They have to find other jobs, and many of them leave the field. Uh, and so when some new funding comes along, all of that, that knowledge and um, sort of specific field knowledge that was built up over you know, the, the decade previous really is gone and we have to start from scratch again. Um, and so we've, what we've done is, is we've created this funding organization with, with that really as a, as a mindset. The idea of this organization, it's called, um, called FIRST, the Foundation for Investing in Research in SETI Science and Technology is to, is to uh, basically be the National Science Foundation for SETI. Um, the, the organization hopefully will um, secure a, a fairly large endowment, and then the interest from that endowment will go to a grants program that'll fund a, a range of grants with a specific focus on SETI. Uh, and there's a, a whole number of people that are involved in this, uh, Frank Drake and Jeff Marcy and Sarah Seeger at MIT. Um, and uh, we've sort of just come together in the last year or so, and it's, it's certainly early days with regard to this organization. But, but I'm very, very excited about, about the goal of the organization and the mindset of the organization, which is not just to conduct one SETI experiment or a couple of SETI experiments or to build our own telescope, but really to provide a, a sustainable stream of funding uh, for SETI researchers worldwide that would all be peer-reviewed um, and subject to the, you know, the highest sort of levels of, of scientific rigor in analyzing proposals um, and, and again could, could continue for, for years to come.